stop doing these things. In this video, I'm gonna share seven things that I think every homeowner should stop doing. I had this question the other day from one of the folks on our website, newhvacguide.com, where we help folks through the process of buying a heating and air system. But I wanted to do this video where it's, I'm just gonna share the seven top things that homeowners need to stop doing because they're making these big mistakes. Let's dive into it. The top seven things. Number one, stop calling just anyone. Stop calling just the first person that pops up on Google or just calling the same company over and over but never asking for a specific technician. If you find somebody that you like, call that company and then ask for that specific technician. There's nothing wrong with that. The company may say, no, he's backed up or for whatever reason, you can't have that particular technician at that time. But if you find somebody you like, just realize not all technicians are created equal. That may seem like common sense, but I hear folks all the time, they'll say, well, that company over there, they're not any good. They did this or that at my house, not realizing it actually may not be the company. You may have just gotten a bad apple at that company, right? So it shouldn't be a representation of the entire company or the owner. The point being, you should find that right technician and then just use that technician as much as you can. Now, I'm not saying that if you find a bad apple that that means that that company is good. I mean, in a lot of situations, there might be a reason why that bad apple works there, but just realize a lot of times companies are hiring folks and they sometimes hire someone and find out that they're a bad apple and have to part ways. That doesn't mean that because that bad apple happened to come to your house, that that means that that company is horrible or whatever. You, you kind of get the picture. The point being, if you find a good technician, call that company and ask for that technician. If nothing else, you're making that technician look good to their employer because they are good, right? Number two, stop focusing on brand so much. I have folks that comment on our videos all the time. They'll go to our website and they'll ask questions about particular brands. I've even seen other folks on YouTube do videos about particular brands and people commenting on it saying that that's their brand of choice now and so on. Now, I'm not saying I don't have my favorites. Everybody that has seen any of my videos knows that I do have a favorite. My favorite for years has been Daikin. I think they have the best products, the best warranties, the best technology and so on. Please note that Daikin has sponsored some of our content on our YouTube channel and the FTC requires that I say so. That doesn't mean that you have a good contractor in your area that installs that particular brand. And so I tell folks all the time, stop focusing on the brand, focus on the contractor, be super militant about reading their reviews and finding a good contractor and then go with the brand that they're willing to stand behind and that they like. Number three, stop focusing on just the price. Stop focusing on the price alone. And we've talked about that in some recent videos where there are statistics now that show that homeowners are focusing on more than just price. But I th just think that that's always a mistake. I'm not saying you shouldn't get multiple quotes and make sure that no one's taking advantage of you, but consider the value that they're giving you. Consider the company's reputation. Consider the products that they're selling and the, what they're offering the extras, if you will? Are they giving you a little better warranty? Are they giving you some upgrades or accessories that the uh, next company is not? And so on. Consider more than just the price. Number four, I see this rule broken all the time, and that is stop assuming that stuff is going to get done. And I can think of a number of things that would fall under this particular tip, but the main one that I will just throw out there is I have a lot of folks that will tell me that they assumed that the warranty would get registered by the company that installed it. I would not assume that. I think it's great when companies do that. I think that it's helpful. I think it could also be argued that that should be something they do. But either way, whether it is or is not their job, I think that you as the homeowner should not assume that it's their job. I would want that warranty registration confirmation sheet, that certificate that shows that it's registered. I would want that back from them to show that it's done and I wouldn't assume that it's done. So I've heard multiple horror stories. I've had to deal with that at my company where folks are now upset that their warranty is not gonna cover it. And if you have a heating and air system and you wanna know, is the system properly registered? What is my warranty coverage? That's something that we now have at our website. You can go to newhvacguide.com, scroll to the bottom, click check my warranty, and then go to your brand and put in your information, your serial number from your heating and air system, 
and get your warranty coverage. Not enough homeowners keep up with that. They assume that everything is taken care of only to find out the hard way that it's not. Number five, this is no surprise, stop neglecting that air filter. And I know folks all the time, they'll say, oh yeah, I know I don't change it as much as I should. They're just nonchalant about it. And a lot of folks don't realize how big a deal that is. You are starving your system for air. You're causing more breakdowns. You're causing it to draw more energy and have a higher utility bill. You're causing it to have a less life. You're doing the opposite of extending that life of that heating and air system and adding more age and more mileage and more strain on a system starving for air. I've seen systems that were completely iced up that the system was running and things ice over and this is a huge problem, huge energy waster, only to find out it was simply because they weren't changing their air filter as much as they would. And I would go one step further than that and not just say the air filter, but just the maintenance in general. They're not getting it maintained properly. They wonder why they have high utility bills. They wonder why their system doesn't last as long as the next one. And they are not having that system properly maintained. Have someone do more than just a checkup, have a pro come in, do a proper, what I call a tune up of that system where they clean the system, they clean the coils, treat the drains, make the system as new as possible again. Also checking for safety problems and other issues that could arise, but ultimately staying on top of these things, a lot of homeowners don't do it and they end up literally paying for it. Number six, leaving your HVAC tech alone. And this kind of plays into assuming things get done, but it also plays into, I had a friend of mine, we talked about this on a video not long ago, where a friend of mine, he assumed that things were getting done right. He had called one company and they had told him what was wrong. And he called me and he said, what do you think of this? And I said, something doesn't add up there. You need to get a second opinion. So he gets another company out there after the first company told him what they thought was wrong and quoted him thousands of dollars. Now he's got company two out there. He walks away and takes a phone call and company number two comes up with a whole different diagnosis also costing thousands of dollars and i started asking him a few questions hey did they pull a nitrogen tank off their truck did they have temperature probes on this line or what were some of the things you were seeing and he said well i didn't stay there i, I went and took a phone call and that's fine i mean if you have somebody you trust but at this point he's getting a second opinion he doesn't have someone he trusts and i'm asking him some questions as a friend who knows this trade and he can't answer them because he walked away. I would say don't walk away. If you're getting a second opinion or even that first diagnosis, why not just stand there? Let's make sure that they are actually doing something to try to diagnose it. They're actually testing things. They're actually taking some tools and some probes and some gauges and they're doing some tests and they are trying to figure out what's wrong with that system. What's worse is the first company that came to his house, not only did they say that the system was low on refrigerant, they went one step further at, without testing things. And instead of actually taking a tool like a sniffer and trying to find that refrigerant leak or pressurizing the system and trying to find that leak. They instead just said, hey, just based on my experience, it's usually the indoor coil. Here's an estimate of $3,100 to replace that coil without ever even testing the system. They don't, that coil could be completely fine and they want to quote and sell that coil replacement. The point is in all of this, stop leaving your techs alone. If they have a problem with you hovering over them, they might have something to hide and they might not be the technician you wanna be using. And finally, number seven, biggest problem I see homeowners making when they're dealing with HVAC techs, and that is approving work without a contract. Stop doing that. They need to put something in writing, something that they're willing to give to you. It's not that hard. Even if they use a CRM on their phones, they can get you something digitally that says, hey, we're going to do X, Y, and Z. This is what we're providing. Here's what the warranty coverage is going to be after we do that. Even for simple repairs, get something in writing, get a contract in place of some kind instead of just willy nilly approving work to get done. Some of these repairs, we're not talking about a simple little repair. We're not talking about a simple little $10 fix here. We're talking about in some cases, hundreds, if not thousands of dollars, and you're not getting anything in writing. So that's my seven, seven biggest things you need to stop doing right away. What did I miss? Love to hear your comments in the comments section. If you like this video, I think you'll like this one even more. It's where I give you 10 tips to extend the life of your HVAC system. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button.
We'll see you next time.